Good morning and welcome to Heartland Dual Sport. In today's video, we're going to be doing a real quick video. We're going to show you the tools that we carry on our adventure trips. In this video, we're also going to be talking about a mistake I made on my last adventure trip and how hopefully my mistake may help you to keep from making the same mistake. We're also going to be talking about another tool which I believe is most commonly overlooked and something that I didn't realize how important it was until this last trip that we took to Michigan and back. So let's get to the video. Again guys, thanks for tuning in to Heartland Dual Sport. I'm trying to speak up, it is raining. Sorry about that guys, I've redone this video about three times. So what I'm trying to do is narrow it down and just get it a real quick video instead of a longer video like I've historically done. I'm trying to boil it down, get to the nuts and bolts. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you a video up here. I've panned across all the tools. The only tools that aren't open is this wrapped up deal over here on the side. And what that is, is it's basically a tire changing mat. It's made out of canvas. And again, I've done a video on that in the past. It's made by Best Rest or Best Cycle Parts. I'll put a link down below. But again, these are the basic tools that we use and we take with us on every adventure. We also are gonna be answering the question. The two questions came up recently. One was, what are your basic tools? Pete Lancaster recently commented on one of our recent videos that we posted. I believe it was day five of the trip out to the East Coast. But his, his, here's his comment. Have you ever considered having a video about the KLR maintenance during these long trips? So we're going to be answering that question as well. Again, real quickly, and we're just going to go over all these together. The basic tools I've got laid out in front of us. We've got everything from a Leatherman to a chain breaker, an air pump. If you guys remember, this is a tool that we made as well. I've since added a piece of leather on it, and it is now a dual purpose. It's also a knife hone on one side, and then you can still use this to lubricate your chain. My biggest deal when we're doing maintenance on the adventures that we're taking, I use the Plexus. The Plexus is one of the tools that I use every day at the end of the trip. I'll clean off my windscreen on both the helmet and the bike. Next, after we get our camp unpacked, because this goes in the bag with our camping supplies, we can jack the bike up on the rear and we lube the chain. It's really important to lube your chain, especially if you've been riding in the rain. You also want to do it while your chain's warm, so I do that in a relatively quick amount of time from the time I park at my campsite. I'll jack that up, it's real quick. Once I've got my tent out of the way, I can grab a hold of this stick, and then also the bags are lighter by then and I don't have the top bag and all that on. Next up, this is a big can, and if you guys work for SC1 and you're watching this video, I'd appreciate it if you guys could make a smaller travel size in the SC1. The reason that we use the SC1, our bike is known for vibrations. So if you'll take and spray your bike and clean it off really good, it will help you find loose bolts, loose nuts, loose screws. And it's also just a good way to kind of give your bike a once over. Do that. I Again, I do it in the evening. That way in the morning when I'm packed, I'm ready to go. I know that my tires are in good shape and I know that everything's ready to roll. That brings us up to the next point is going to be Along with the tools that you see laid out, which is basic tools, we have added this tire monitor. And here's what I'm gonna tell you about the tire monitor. Number one, thanks for watching the video until this part, because I believe this is a crucial element that is often overlooked. As you guys can see, we've got a tire pressure gauge. When I don't have my, when I'm not on an adventure trip, it goes right up here in this top bag. When I am on an adventure trip, it goes in the top of my little tank bag, and I've got one of the old Wolfman tank bags that I used even when I had my DRZ. But checking your tire pressure every day is something that you need to be doing before you ride off, and here's where this tire management deal pays off so much. And I'm gonna give you two examples and why I believe it can make your ride safer 
and make your ride better. With this on here and mounted on here, you're constantly getting a tire pressure reading. The one thing that I never really thought about was the difference between your front and rear tire. I've got my front tire aired up to 29 pounds and that's cold reading. You don't want to take your reading when your tires are hot. You do that in the mornings before you take off. On my rear tire, I have it a little bit more because that's where the majority of the weight is and that's going to be 30 to 31 pounds is where I run it. Here's something that I noticed while I'm riding. Your tires are going to heat up. So when I start out with 28, 29 pounds, it generally will level out with a warm tire around 30, 31 and that seems to do great on the black top and on the roads. And then when the rear tire heats up, it's typically 10 degrees more. Thinking about it, that's where all the friction's going. All your power out of your engine's going out of that rear tire most of the time, not counting the little bit of time that you would use it for braking and that type of stuff. So, here's your two examples. Left Michigan, coming home, it was cool up there, so obviously the tire pressure's low up there. I left my tires at 28 and 30. By the time I got into 300 miles into the trip, which would be basically the next day's camping spot, my tires were already back up to the 2930 when they were cooled off. When I was leaving there and making the run home, and I did basically a 750 mile run home on my second day, and the reason I did that was when I got into Arkansas, about the time that I'd normally stop to find a camp spot, it was almost 100 degrees. I had sweat pouring down my face and my eyes. If you stopped rolling on the bike, you immediately warmed up. Especially knowing that I'm wearing this climb gear, which is hot anyways. It does great when you're rolling, but when you stop, you can feel it. But here's how the heat affected the tires. Running at 70, 75 miles an hour, my rear tire got up to 45 pounds and it set off the alarm. When it set off the alarm, I took that as a gentle reminder that my tires, not only was I hot and I needed a break, but the tires were getting to the point that they were really hot. Did it save me a blowout on the road? I don't know. But the one thing I do know is I'd rather have a warning because I've never thought about it when I'm rolling. I've been riding bikes since I was a young man. I have, many of you know I started riding when I was 14. I've rode a lot of sport bikes. I've rode Harleys. I've rode cruisers. I've rode a lot of things and not one time have I, not one time, have I ever in the heat of the day in the middle of a ride stopped and checked my tire pressure. I was shocked to see that it was 15, 16 pounds higher in the rear during that heat. Again, I think this is a safety issue and I think it's something that after using it for over 6,000 miles now, I believe that this is a tool that could be as important as wearing your helmet because you've only got two tires and if you lose one of them, you know there's nothing good going to come out of that, especially if you're doing highway speeds. It would be difficult enough if you lost one rolling at a slow speed. Now with that said, one thing that I do want to say, most of you guys know that I'm running the Tromax Mission. It has an extremely hard sidewall. I've witnessed a friend of mine whose tire went flat and he rode that on a flat basically 30 miles. So that says a lot about the Trailmax missions and, and how good they could pay off in an emergency type situation if you needed to get off the interstate to the next exit, it can be done. This tire pressure monitor gauge will help you not only if, know if your tires are over inflated but under inflated. And I think the potential is there if you had one of these tire pressure gauges on there and you realized your tire was going low way before it was ever flat you might be able to fix it with fix a flat as you guys know I ride with ride on in my tubes so it's supposed to help not only keep your tires balanced but it's also supposed to help with the potential leaks similar to slime so I think it's a great tool again I think it's probably as safe to have on your bike as a helmet I initially when I bought this tire pressure monitor I didn't even think I was going to do a review on it and the reason being is I just thought it was something that would be kind of convenient for me so that I don't have to stick my air chuck on it every time that I'm on a road. And you guys know I've been doing a lot of long road trips. After having it on here on my ride home and watching my tires get so hot that they were expanding from the heat is when I realized what a deal that it could be potentially as far as a safety issue. And again, I'm using this 
as an example of a blowout on your on your motorcycle which would be potentially dangerous uh, to say the very least especially at highway speeds we've only got two tires on the ground this way you can monitor them the entire time that you're rolling instead of occasionally when you stop or in the morning before you leave now then that brings us up to the next tool that i forgot which was a grave mistake in my tool kit i've got a breakover bar for the front axle you have to have a special allen wrench basically to get your front axle off in case you need to do a tire change that breakover is a 3 8 inch breakover bar i've got the axle nut for the rear axle which i believe is 27 millimeters and we can look at that later but it's a half inch chuck and the tool that i did not take with me was any kind of breakover with that now with that said the saving grace you can see we do have the little wrench that i used to carry with my honda africa twin and it's the same size nut so i could have been able to use it however it is um critical that you check your tools this was a mistake i made and had i been out there on the trail myself alone that could have potentially cost me a lot of times i'm going to go a step further and say that if you're running these tires that we have which is the trail max if you have the room take a rear tube and a front tube we've historically always been told our whole lives growing up you could always run a front tube in the rear tire it does work in a pinch and i witnessed that to go at minimum of 100 miles it eventually did wear out and it had a friction spot that it just wore a hole in it but 100 miles may or may not it would probably get you out of trouble what i'm saying is it's so difficult to change it why not just go ahead and put a rear tube in that way maybe you don't have to change it again on your trip especially if you're going on a trip where you're 12 1500 miles away from home now then with that said i'm specifically talking about the trail max tires because i've ran the motos tractionators they're not nearly nearly as hard to change and i would have no problem putting the front tube in it knowing that i could potentially get myself within 100 miles you're probably going to be able to find a town where you can safely pull over or rest stop or something and do it instead of on the side of the road this canvas mat i do want to make a real quick note inevitably when you do have a flight and you go down the canvas mat that we use gives you a spot that you can change your tire without putting your greasy axle into the dirt sand whatever so it helps keep the bike parts clean and it helps keep you well you're you're gonna get dirty but it'll help with your bike parts again i'll, I'll show another view of that opened up and the other tools uh, minimal if you're running the trail max missions i suggest that you take at least four tire tools um, you can see all the other miscellaneous tools that i've got on the table and those are basically what we carry in our kit all right guys last but not least we are going to do a real quick bonus round and this here is a basically it's a bow scale it's what i use when i'm building bows and it's a way to measure the weight of each of my bags as you guys know on the last trip we were running the moscow moto bags that we did have on the africa twin they're a little bit bigger than the tusk bags and i knew that i was going to be going into a colder environment which meant i needed to take some more warm clothes instead of the summer clothes that we took on our way to the east coast where this comes in real handy and why i'm going to call it a bonus round is you can get one of these whether it be for bow making uh, or uh, they make a little scale just like this that's for weighing luggage and what i like to do is before i leave on my trip i want to get all my stuff packed on my bike the way that it's going to be when i'm taking the trip and then i'm going to weigh each bag and then i keep notes in my notebook if you guys watched last week's video show and tell monday we were talking about the notebook that we carry with us everywhere we go i like to keep notes of exactly how much weight i got in each bag try to keep it as level as you can weight wise and then the top bag it's always around 24 to 25 pounds and that's just got my tent um the solo stove that kind of stuff in it so again guys this is just a real quick video the basic maintenance that we do when we're on our adventures is we take care of our tires we take care of our chain the best we can we use the sc1 to clean the bike that's a good way to go over everything on your bike to make sure everything's tight and properly if it's something's loose you're going to hear it rattle when you're wiping it down by hand especially in a campground where it's nice and quiet and peaceful you're going to feel those parts 
Second to that, keep your tools that you think you're going to be using mostly where they're real easy to get to. As you guys know, if you've seen the other video, I've, I've got the Tusk fender bag mounted to that 3D cycle parts plate that we're using to mount our soft cases to. I've got it wrapped on the inside opposite of the muffler and we keep the zip ties, we keep a couple of tire tools in that and that's where we keep the front tube as well. Again, just trying to keep your bike leveled out is very important for your general daily maintenance and then also just clean your bike. It helps you find the loose parts. Clean your chain, it'll give you more life and you don't have to worry about that. I didn't have it on the table, but I do have a master link and I do have a chain breaker. The chains that come on our bike don't have a master link. If you get yourself in a spot where you have to get the chain off, you need a chain breaker. Um, and that's gonna come in really important if something bad happens to your chain. If your chain breaks completely off, it's still, you're probably gonna need a chain breaker to at least get it down to where you could use a master link. As always, we would love to hear your input. What are some of the tools that you're seeing on the table that we don't have that you carry with you on your adventures? Share with us, share with everybody that's gonna be reading these comments. We greatly appreciate it. I'd like to hear your, your short list. What's your basic maintenance and what do you do on your adventures, even if they're just uh, day rides or solo trips or, or even an overnight camp trip? What's some things that we don't have on the table that you bring with you? Again, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. Thanks for hanging in. I, I tried to keep this video short. I've actually redone it four times now, trying to shorten it up. I'm just trying to cover so much information in a short period of time. Again, we appreciate each and every one of you. If you guys like the notebook that we have talked about, go back and watch last Monday's video. We're doing a giveaway. Find out how you can enter it when to get one of those notebooks. So again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. May you have a blessed week and let's go ride.